my training week starts on Sunday because Sunday sits leftmost on the on the calendar. <laughs> Sunday, I make it a focused effort to move as much as possible, ideally outdoors. I'm thinking endurance. I essentially want to be like a mule. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, be like a mule. I actually have this shirt. <laughs> that's that, going to be that, that's going to be in the headline yeah, of this episode. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. <laughs> I actually have this shirt that I sometimes like to wear on those days. It's not a black button down shirt, but it has a picture of a sloth and it's crossing its three sloth fingers like Wolverine. And I get, that's like what I'm trying to embody. I'm trying to embody the sloth. So what I'll do on that day is because sometimes it's a social day with other people in my life. If I'm on my own, I'll throw on an eight or 10 pound weight vest. They have mm -hmm. these thinner ones now that aren't these mirror vests that where you, know, you don't look like you're in law enforcement or you're trying to pretend you're in the SEAL teams, which I, I'm yeah. not, never was. But they have these thinner ones that sit a bit more flush. I forget the brand name now, but I don't have any relationship to them. I'll get it for you, but I really like this one. And I'll head out for a, probably a 75 minute to a 90 minute slow jog with some hills. And I'll try and nasal breathe the whole time. I'll often listen to a podcast or a book. Sometimes I'll just let my mind drift. That's if I'm on my own. If I'm with other people, what I will do is I'll fill up a backpack with a bunch of heavy stuff, usually some water in there too, and drink it as I go. And I'll do three or four or five hours of just hiking and just trying to be outside as much as possible. The specific goal of that day is endurance. Then Monday is the goal for me is to train my legs. Just get a leg workout on Monday. First of all, I just like the way that sounds to myself, like leg workout on Monday, but it also sets up the work week really nicely. Here's why. I'm gonna train my legs the way that's always worked best for me for training, which is a warm up and then two to three, maybe four hard sets. Kind of Mike Menser, mm -hmm. Darian Yates, not with four reps and all of that, but what we're talking about is warming up and then doing hard sets that are heavier or more repetitions than the last time. And just so I'm clear, yeah, are we talking about multiple sets of the same exercise, single sets of four different exercises? What are we talking about? We're talking about two to four sets, but usually two to three of two exercises per muscle group. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. So I'm training calves. That takes about 10, 15 minutes total. Mm -hmm. I try and move relatively quickly through that. So two to three minutes rest, maybe four if I'm going for a heavy set. Then I'm weaker in the hamstrings than I am in my quads. So I do two warm-ups and then two to four working sets of lying leg curls, mm -hmm. very standard stuff. Lying leg curls, meaning on a machine. Yeah, on a machine. Not like reverse. Yeah, like a Nautilus machine Got or something. Mm -hmm. Not seated, doesn't work for me. Just lying leg curls. Yep. And, and not the hoist machines that move with you to make it easier. <laughs> <laughs> no. And maybe the occasional force strap if somebody's there, you mm -hmm. know, to help me. Then I go do two to four sets, but typically three of glute ham raises, mm -hmm. which is an incredible yeah. exercise. The equipment isn't in every gym, but I'm doing you know, about three, to, you know, so three or four sets of glute ham raises going slow. And, you know, this is basically like if you were going to do a deadlift, everyone knows what a deadlift is, but now take the ground and rotate it 90 degrees and make it the wall. That's what a glute ham raise really is. It allows you to do a deadlift, but then at the top, do a leg curl. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it that way, like you just tilted the, the ground, you just rotated it counterclockwise. We'll, 90 get, we'll get a link to a YouTube video, <laughs> yeah, folks. Exactly. Glute <laughs> ham raises are great. Lower back. So entire posterior chain. So then I'm done with calves and hamstrings and then I'll do two or three sets of leg extensions. So maybe a warm up and then two or three sets of working leg extensions, which for whatever reasons are incredibly painful. I hate them, but they work to isolate the quads. And then two or th three sets of working hack squats after a warm up. Mm -hmm. Hack squats, heavy, 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 heavy. And then I'm done. I'm out. Tuesday, I don't want to call it a recovery day, but Tuesday I'm doing something really different. First of all, my legs need recovery. So what I'll do is substantial amounts of deliberate heat exposure and deliberate cold exposure. Yes, I do cold showers in the morning first thing nowadays. Yes, it is a bad idea to do cold water immersion after hypertrophy training. So just for the record, you don't want to get into an ice bath after hypertrophy training in the six hours after a hypertrophy training because it can blunt the hypertrophy. Hmm. It, it blocks the inflammation, which is exactly what you want to trigger the adaptation of hypertrophy. But Tuesday is really about getting the maximum effect of heat exposure and cold exposure. So 20 minutes in the sauna, very hot, three to five minutes in the cold plunge up to the neck, back into the sauna for 20 minutes, back into the cold plunge for three to five minutes, back into the sauna for 20 minutes, 
back into the cold plunge for three to five minutes. It's work, but it's amazing in the sense that you recover very well from the leg day. You generate all the hormone neurotransmitter type of adaptations that one wants, and you get very, very good at tolerating heat and cold. Then Wednesday, I do one of two things. I'm either going to do a shorter duration than Sunday cardiovascular training workout. So I might do, I'm thinking about five minutes of warm up and then about 25 to 30 minutes of usually running for me, where I'm just trying to get out and cover as much distance as I can at a fast clip, but steady. So I'm not sprint, stop, sprint, stop. That's typically what I'll do on Wednesday. Although if my legs are still a little bit sore, that's when I'll train and here the bodybuilders are just gonna go, oh, they're gonna scoff. I train what I call torso. What do I do? I try to get pushing through the chest and shoulders. I'm trying to pull for the back. I already got my lower back with the glute ham raises. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to do is overhead shoulder presses after a warm up, two to three sets, working sets, or maybe four. I like ring dips and dips these days. Those are hard for me, but I, you know, two or three work sets of those. So chest, shoulders, and I'm going to upset some people here, but I don't tend to train back every week. I do it every other week because just I have some genetic abnormality where those grow really easily and I can throw proportions off really quickly. But I might do three or four sets of chins or max rep chins slow. Friday is a really important day because Friday is the day that I do a short workout, usually only about three minutes of warm up and about 12 minutes of training. And the goal is to get my heart rate as high as I possibly can. I learned this from Andy Galpin, just increasing VO2 max, getting those really fast twitch muscle fibers. My favorite way to do this is I'll get on the assault bike, which are the ones with the handles, with the fan, which is mm -hmm. not designed to keep you cool. It's designed to create resistance, folks. And do 20 second on sprint, 10 second rest, 20 second on, 10 second rest. Tabata Tabata style. type thing for six to eight rounds. And then what I like to do is take a band and tie it to something like a chin-up bar or something, and I'll squat down and jump. And I'll do as high jumping as I possibly can, but I actually control the eccentric. I'm holding the band as I come down. And so I learned from Peter Atia, I've learned from Andy Galpin that our ability to jump and land is strongly correlated with physical longevity. And then Saturday is the fun one because I'm still enjoy this. I'll go into the gym in the morning. Usually it's mid morning and I'll do you know, small muscle groups, biceps, triceps, rear delts. I'll do another tib and calf workout a little bit lighter than the one on leg day. Cause leg day is coming in two days and the mm -hmm. next day I'm doing that long hike. So that, that day is really to round out the smaller muscle groups that need work. And I have short torso, long arms. And so torso muscles grow very easily for me, get stronger easily, long arms, like, you know, they require a little bit more work. So I like to do a dedicated day for that. Mm -hmm. Same way, warm up plus two to four work sets of two to three exercises. I always include dips at some point during the week, bench dips, tricep extensions with cables, basic stuff, preacher curls, mm -hmm. and kind of incline curls. So very basic stuff, but I just want to backtrack one step because I failed to say that Friday, the idea is to get that VO2 max up. But guess what? It's also designed to indirectly hit the legs. We hit legs on Monday. Oh, yeah. And they've recovered. We now know that protein synthesis maximizes after these training workouts at about 48 hours and then starts to taper off. Now, you read that, you hear that a lot, especially on social media, and people think you have to hit a muscle group every 48 hours. But no, you hold on to the protein synthesis you generated for another couple of days. So that Friday sprint on the bike workout or sprint on a field workout and jumping is indirectly targeting the quads, and calves and hamstrings. And so you're keeping them online for hypertrophy.